Welcome back to another episode of Satisfactory. Today, I've got a lot of things planned. I need to make some automated miners. Uh, these little guys are pretty good, you know, um, but they're not going to cut it in the terms of automating my base. So, I have recently unlocked uh, foundations, but also with that hub upgrade came some miners. Um, so I will use my resources that I have gathered to craft some of these miners. I need to collect limestone, iron, and copper. Uh, I've got two iron pads here, which is pretty nice. Um, so I will be utilizing those. And then I will conveyor belt my copper and my limestone to my base. Um, so let's get started with that. Um, but first, I wanted to show off camera, I just let the machines run for a little bit. I've added some conveyor belts. Um, there's actually not currently anything going through there because it is all spent on resources. And I do not have any more copper in my inventory. So you'll just have to watch the iron bars. Look at our first little conveyor belt. This is so awesome. I love this game. It truly is uh, satisfying making a factory. Um, so we're getting plenty of iron plates here, smelting up some iron, getting a lot of wire here, um, and I've got a ton of iron in my inventory. Iron uh, ore, that is. So we will definitely be using that also. So I've got a lot of research projects I can start. We've got flower petals, the bacon agaric, the alien carapace, and the barrel nut. So I will get started on one of those as well. Let's say the alien carapace. It only needs one, um, but I'm sure we'll, we will be getting more as time goes on. Um, so we will analyze this, and what analyzing these materials actually does is uh, unlocks more tiers of upgrades in our milestone planner. Um, depending on what the upgrade is, it'll be an additional, like one of these buttons you can click to select a milestone. It'll just be placed in the appropriate tier based on the research that you get. Um, and it's always the same from the items, but there's kind of a, a progression in that way too. You can unlock hidden milestones through that, which is pretty neat. Um, and speaking of milestones, I need to get my next milestone. Uh, biofuel is going to be very handy. Uh, it's a condensed version of biomass, which burns a lot more efficiently than biomass. So as far as power goes, that's going to be a necessity. Um, everything else here um, is not as important. I do use the conveyor splitters a lot. These are extremely useful. Um, so I'll probably go for those after I get my biofuel. Um, personal storage and conveyor walls. I'm definitely going to want to start getting my part assembly going. Um, chainsaw, I definitely want as soon as I can get. Um, so I can start chopping down some trees to make biomass and biofuel. Uh, and then the jump pads and the walkways. The walkways are nice, but they're not too needed. Um, and the jump pads I don't really bother with. Um, they're very fun. I will give you that. They're very fun. But, um, unfortunately, I just don't, don't really find a use for them. Alright, so we're going to go over here to each of our miners. Uh, pick it up. And then you actually use the portable miner as part of crafting the Miner Mark 1. You can see the construction requirements. A portable miner, five iron rods, and five concrete. Um, I'm going to add three of them to my to-do list. Now this to-do list is really something special. It'll You can add whatever you want to, really, in any quantity. Um, and it will give you a breakdown of all of the parts you need, how many you need, how many you have, um, if you have enough, it, it's really, really nice. Uh, really, again, amazing UI design. So we're going to take this miner, going to rotate it using the scroll wheel, and go ahead and place that there. Um, again, this ramp is temporary. Um, I'm actually going to adjust it slightly, because I'm very picky about how I build my things. Um, so we'll have it face like that beautiful. And now it is in alignment with my ramp. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead to my other resource nodes and do the same. Alright, so we are over here at my copper. And now I can just do the same as the iron. I'm going to pick up this miner. 
I'm going to select the minor mark one. Going to rotate it, kind of angling towards my base. And then on the way back, I've got a plenty of plates in my inventory. I'm going to make a conveyor belt system. Um, now I'm going to place conveyor poles, and you can actually align it in a grid by holding the left control key. I don't know if I've mentioned that yet, um, but you can align it in the grid layout with the smelter. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to kind of angle it that way towards my base and kind of aim between um, these two trees here. And what my goal actually is, is I did it wrong <laughs> the first time. The first click places the pole. Let's see, right about here. The second click, if you move your cursor up or your um, wherever you're pointing, it'll change the height of the pole. Um, so we're gonna go to up. And now we can take our conveyor belt and route it right up to the top. Now we can walk under this, no problem. Uh, later we can drive vehicles under it if we need to. Um, and we're just going to get this over to our base so that we can start getting some iron ore. Now, I'm not going to fully um, insert it into my base just quite yet um, because I'm going to be clearing this land very shortly here, um, removing the foliage and putting some things in different places as I build up my base. So I'm just going to do... Actually, this is like about where I'm comfortable. Um, I would say I'm gonna bring it down to the level so I can actually like pick up some copper if I need to um, But I'm going to clear out this area lay down a foundation and build my base upon that foundation and this will just be one of the Conveyor belt inputs for my resources into my base Which I am planning on kind of building in this area whereabouts All right, so we're gonna go ahead and I brought up my deconstructor but that was a mistake. We just need to pick it up. Do the same for our limestone. Um, one thing I don't like about the limestone modules or nodules is that they're kind of like um, a bit taller than the ore. I get it's rocks, but it makes the miner kind of a little bit strange to place. I think right here is good because it's like the lowest to the ground, but I don't like when it's really high up like that. I just think it looks kind of ridiculous. Um, so we're going to place it about here, and now we're going to do the same with these conveyor poles, going to line it up. Uh, this tree is actually going to be in my way, which is, you know, kind of sucks, but we can work around it. We're going to go about here or so, go up to, and then hopefully the conveyor belt should be able to reach. Yes, perfect. Okay, so now we're going to do another one. And continue to build this conveyor belt back to our base. The MAM has completed its analysis. And perfect. We just completed the analysis of that alien carapace. So let's go check out what that is. Alright, let's see what we got here. The analysis of alien carapace is completed. Please choose a new specimen in the list to begin a new analysis. Alright. So Additional let's see what. Oh. Are required for R and D to continue developing a defense-oriented blueprint. The creature has been named Fakeacoyerus plumius cotta or fluffy-tailed hog. Fluffy-tailed hog. I think it is referring to the uh, the little chargers that will run at you. Um, they're like little, I guess, yeah, fl like little hog things. Um, but really. We got those carapaces from those flying bugs in the first episode. Um, I don't think we've actually seen any of those hog type creatures yet in this area. Um, the only other thing that we've seen are the big fat bodied dudes like that guy standing right over there. So it is an early access alpha. What can you expect? Now it looks like I actually have a ton of barrel nuts, so we're going to go ahead and start the research analysis on this barrel nut. It only takes one. So that's five minutes left. Okay, just to quickly pivot, I actually don't have any copper on me or way to get copper into this smelter. So I'm going to take away this conveyor belt and then um, change the recipe on this to iron and place some of my iron in here to start smelting just so I've got some bars for manual crafting. Um, and then I'm gonna pick up my plates from here and continue bringing the conveyor belt of the limestone over. 
All right, now that we've got the conveyor belt over here, we need to run some power to all of our miners. Um, currently, I can remove... Well, that's fine. We'll leave that there. It's not actually using much power anyway, just existing. Uh, we are producing 40 megawatts, and we are consuming 12 megawatts. And if we check the miner... Oh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, if we look down here, it consumes 5 megawatts. So we'll actually only be consuming 15 megawatts extra which will bring us to 27 total, which is fine. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and drag my power lines over there. Oops, it actually looks like I'm pretty low on cable, so I'm going to go ahead and get some more cable real quick before I continue. All right, so now we have our limestone machine powered up with the poles I ran over here, and it's going to start spitting out our first little lime resource. Here it comes, right down the hole. Where are you? I can't stand on this little rock. There it is. Yay. Our first limestone. We can actually use the belts to run on back. A uh, slightly more efficient way and quicker way to travel, I might add. Um, so we are going to go do the same for my iron and my copper. All right, so I now have my iron leading right into my iron refinery or smelter, I suppose. Um, and it is powered up, so you can see all of our iron coming down the conveyor belt and is going to be shoving itself right into here, so we won't have to worry about throwing more iron in manually ever again, which is a great feeling. Now this is done finishing my other iron, so now I've got quite a few iron ingots on me. I actually did end up picking up a bit of copper when I picked up my portable miner before. So we're going to change this back to copper, um, throw in my copper, and create a belt going from here to here, because um, there's no use for getting copper bars other than to smelt into wire. Now I do need a lot of wire and I do need a lot of cable, so I'll keep those separate for now until I can uh, conveyor split later, um, but this will do us just nicely. Alright, darn my indecisiveness, we're going to drag this conveyor belt and just throw it into my, um, oh, well I'm out of resources, we're going to throw it into my smelter over here just to get started with um, mass producing cable because I will need a lot of it, um, but I'm going to just go ahead and do that now. Alright, looks like we got our barrel nuts scanned, we're going to go ahead and scan this bacon agaric now, um, and then we'll move on to flower petals from there. And it looks like there's a few more tiers of the alien carapace. Um, I know this one takes five, or sorry, ten alien carapace to research that tier. Um, but for now, we'll do the bacon agaric and then move to the flower petals as far as our research goes. Um, I'm going ahead and run that belt over from my copper into my constructor here. And I'm also going to build another constructor over here for limestone, and then I will also build this new construct we have, the storage container. I don't know it's, if it's that new, um, but completing the hub has unlocked it for us, so we will start to store some of these resources in mass um, to prepare for actually building out my base. So I will be back when all of that is done. Alright, I'm back. I was busy doing some work. I got the conveyor belt routed over into the smelter. I've also built three storage containers, one holding wire, one holding iron plates, and one holding concrete. And where's that concrete coming from? This constructor right here that I've also set up, and I'm feeding the limestone into. Uh, this is all a, like I've said multiple times, a temporary setup until I am ready to tear everything down and replace it, kind of in this general area to create uh, a sort of um, a base layout because actually when you use these foundations it becomes a lot easier to line things up on the grid and a lot easier to place um, objects on it which is a nice feature that I would like to have um, and I've also as you can see cleared out this whole field of all of the leaves and debris um, that would be in my way potentially when I am building up my foundation if this kind of gives you a little idea of where I'd like to build my base.
Um, and I think I might cut down these two trees as well, but I'm not sure. Uh, side note, that looks really cool. That um, either planet or moon, I'm not quite sure what that is, because there also is a moon at night that you see. Um, I'm guessing that's just another planet. And then also, I don't know if you can see that, but there's like a half circle ring, and I have no clue what that is. And it's kind of, it's intriguing me. Uh, I've noticed it since the first episode I've recorded in this area. And there's also that thing. I don't know if you just got a glimpse of that. Um, it, I think it's out of render range currently. But there's something floating around in the water. And I also am not sure what that is. But I am in no way equipped to fight anything new currently. So uh, I'm just going to continue to build up some resources. I actually got enough to unlock a milestone. I'm going to go ahead and un unlock my first official milestone. Um, I went ahead and scanned the the barrel nuts, the bacon agaric, and now I just completed the flower petals. R and D wishes me to tell you these colored petals are useful for two things: dating and creating color cartridges. Dating. <laughs> Mandatory reminder that you are under 24/7 surveillance. The derived blueprint is now accessible in Hub Tier Two. Alright, so see when it says hub tier 2, that was what I was talking about. Um, and then I also found a green power slug. I was unfortunately not recording, um, but it was actually located in the middle of this lake. And as I was swimming out, I kind of walked down here, I was swimming out into the middle of the lake, because um, I had I'd seen the power slug on that little rock out there under the water. And then this thing just starts swimming around me, and I was quite afraid for my life. But luckily, he did not decide to snack on me today. Um, so we might have to pay that little monster a visit at some point. Um, but yeah, back to the milestone. Let me show you what we have. So I completed the nut and the mushroom uh, object scanner things. So I needed to turn in five barrel nuts and one bacon agaric, which I did. The object scanner is something you can build in the equipment workshop. And what this does basically is it'll beep when you are facing one of these items, whatever you set it to. There's a few different items you can set the beeping to. Uh, and you just walk in that direction and it'll lead you to it. But the actual milestones that we have here, I'm going to get biofuel first because that is a very useful resource and it'll help keep us powered for a long time. And I've got enough resources to complete it, so we're going to select this milestone, deposit our resources, and then go ahead and launch. And I like this bit a lot because milestone reached. You have our spaceship structures aimed to provide the first needed to takes all of the cargo away. That is the so cool. Blueprint will ensure improved fuel consumption of biomass burners. Additionally, you can now build the space elevator, which is integral to your contribution to project assembly. That's awesome. I love that. Um, and then you can see in the top right, pod will return in 2 minutes 30 seconds. So you can't constantly just like complete a bunch of milestones in quick succession. There are increasingly long return times between milestones. When you get to the further tiers, they can be upwards of 12 minutes before it returns again. Um, but at that point, you're not really returning a or doing a ton of milestones. Um, so you can see I've got some more resources to build up. The next one I'd like to go immediately for is the chainsaw. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. You can see it's displayed in my upper right hand corner, user interface. Um, so I will work on getting those materials together. And then I will be back when I am ready to turn in this milestone. All right, welcome back. I've spent a little bit of time collecting some resources. Um, these iron rods have taken me quite a long time um, because their their crafting speed is a bit slower, and I haven't been building them up like I have everything else. Um, so I believe since I last left, I created another miner, another uh, uh, smelter, another constructor, a storage container to store these rods. And then I also had to build another power plant because I ran out of juice trying to run all that. Um, so now we have a capacity of 60 megawatts. I had to build this biomass burner. I also converted all of my biomass into biofuel, so that's going pretty well right now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead 
and turn in my next milestone, which will be all those rods, the reinforced iron plates, 250 of the wire, and I need a little bit more cable. Just a few here should do me pretty well. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put that in and submit. So I can now build my chainsaw. Milestone reached. Additional to an inventory expansion, you are now capable of removing foliage that consists primarily of wood. Awesome. That chainsaw is going to come very handy. We'll be able to use that to deforest to our heart's content and continue to destroy this lovely ecosystem we see laid out before us. Well, I can pick up these. Excellent. Right through the building. I had also at some point dropped some iron rods and I don't know where they went exactly because I, I was at the crafting bench and I needed a bit more room in my inventory. So I just drug them out and unlike the leaves, they just kind of disappeared. Um, but that's fine. It wasn't that many. Um, so now we can go to here and see a chainsaw. We're going to go ahead and add this to our to-do list. To get this contextual menu to pop up, you just right-click the item. It doesn't have a plus or minus like the building tool does. You can just right-click, add to to-do list, and it'll add a chainsaw to your to-do list. Okay, I'm going to need some more rods, some more cables, some more reinforced plates, and then we can make our chainsaw. Alright, so that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Uh, let me just finish up and craft my chainsaw here. All right, and we'll equip it. I love these little animations when you first get new um, new tools in the game. Uh, it generally has like a unique animation when you first use it. Um, so that's definitely a really cool, just small detail, but it really does uh, make a difference when you're playing a game like this. Um, so yeah, that's gonna do it for this episode. I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you have a fabulous day.